One section of this video is sponsored by Boltron Games. Find out more later in the video. In this video I'm going to compare and review all the three newly ported Switch games from the Atelier Mysterious trilogy, which includes Atelier Sophie, Atelier Furious and Atelier Lydie and Suelle. This is a JRPG series by Gust and it is published by Koei Tecmo. Thank you so much for the review codes. The Switch has now in total 12 Atelier games. We have the Arland trilogy, which contains Rorona, Totori and Meruru. We have the Dusk trilogy, Aisha, Eska and Logi and Shali. And now we have the Mysterious trilogy, which we will talk about today. We have also Risa 1 and 2 and one spin-off title that we will never talk about on my channel. I have already reviewed and compared the Dusk Trilogy and I highly recommend that video as well because it is just like this video, comparison and review of all the three games. Actually, I have a bunch of Atelier videos on this channel, so you have definitely come to the correct place. Now a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Bold Trend Games, and they want me to talk about the newly released Atelier Online. As we have now recently gotten the first free mobile Atelier game. It is available right now and it is an RPG game with gathering, crafting, fighting, side quests and main quests. It does involve in-game purchases and a gacha system, where there is a chance for premium characters and items to drop. I have played this game now every single day for over a week. I find it cute and enjoyable and charming, fun and addicting. Here it is. I play it on my cell phone, in bed and in the car and everywhere. This is what I have been playing for the past week. Atelier Online. The graphics are colorful and there is plenty of things to do. I like the main characters Sorel and Anise and their art style is just as good as you can expect from an Atelier title. Now I am so lucky that I have a special link down below and I also have a special code for everyone that watches my video. If you are interested in trying out this game for free on your phone, please use my magic link. This is the link that you have to click on. I also have a code for in-game bonuses and that is also on the screen right now and down below. It is such a fun and cute mobile game and I play it every day. You can also feel free to add me on there. And I'm very happy to see that the Atelier series now has a mobile game as well. Thank you so much for sponsoring this section of the video. Now let's go on with the review of the Mysterious Trilogy. Story. Let's start off with Sophie's story. Sophie is an inexperienced alchemist in a small town called Kirchenbell. She finds a book that can talk and float called Plakta, who suffers from amnesia. But as Sophie writes alchemy recipes into the book, her memories are slowly coming back. So that is why it is called Atelier Sophie, the alchemist of the mysterious book. I like this story. Do you remember anything? Owl cow leather is used as my binding. The story of Atelier Ferris is that it is set four years after Sophie's story, but within the same world. And it is that you play as a young girl living in a very secluded mine town inside a mountain for all of her life, with the ability to find ores easily for the fellow townspeople. But all she ever dreams of is to go out and explore the world, which she is not allowed to by her parents. One day, however, Sophie discovers the mining town and tells Ferris of alchemy. After convincing her parents, she sets off into the world in hopes of one day completing the alchemy certification exam. Well, I guess this means your parents understand now. The story of Lydie and Suelle is set another four years after the story of Ferris, and this time you play as the twins Lydie and Suelle, living at their father's atelier in the city. Their father paints pictures and one day the twins discovered that they could somehow enter the paintings to find wonderful worlds filled with materials inside of them. 
They also see a woman who looks like their mom inside the paintings. I feel like all Atelier storylines within the entire series are more on a personal level, where the main characters are always driven by their own and personal desires for growth instead of being a story of grand world-saving proportions or something, which is simply so refreshing. It is on a much more deeper and personal level. I like it. Gameplay. All of these games have the same gameplay formula, so you should not worry about that. As a matter of fact, if you happen to like one of these games, you will most likely like another one, because the gameplay and the structure is the same. You have a home base where you can sleep, save and store your items, change your outfit and do synthesis, which is basically crafting. And you can craft items with materials that you have found. There is always a map and several different locations for you to explore. And there is turn-based combat. All Atelier games are different in some ways when it comes to synthesis and combat throughout the entire series. The synthesis process is for the most part very similar between these particular three games. You select what materials you want to use for each recipe and you place them to fit on a grid-like square with some bonuses for placing a corresponding color on the colored sections of the grid, if that makes sense, if I explain that correctly. The grids themselves just look a tiny bit different between each game. These alchemy mechanics are not my favorite in the series. I much more enjoyed the crafting in Ryza 1 and 2, just as an example, and I just thought I would mention that. The combat is turn-based in all three games, where you enter a combat area screen by touching or whacking enemies in a gathering area. In Sophie, you choose the actions of all party members before watching the entire turn play out. And in the other two, you choose the action and watch them play out one by one if that also makes sense. Some level of strategy is required for every game, as you progress the game and the challenges become harder. There are also difficulty settings, and I always play on easy whenever that is an option. There is no shame in that. When it comes to world map and fast traveling, Sophie has a very pretty map with small dots representing each location that you can travel to, with instant fast traveling when inside the city. Ferris, on the other hand, has the worst fast traveling, as you can only fast travel to every discovered campfire within the current region that you are in. And the region map in itself is not the best in Ferris. Lady Anzuel is much better at this, with fast traveling available to anywhere from anywhere. Tons of side quests are found in all games and a main quest line. A lot of NPCs that like to talk a lot recipes and items to collect, and basically also you will always have something to do and work towards. There are also a lot of cutscenes and some of them are with English voices, but only in the two first games of the trilogy. The last one, Lady and Suel, does not have English voices, only Japanese. But not every cutscene has voices, actually there's not much voice acting. But basically these games are super fun to grind in and I find them all very enjoyable in the gameplay. It is actually the gameplay and also how beautiful they are that keeps me coming back to the Atelier series. <laughs> Graphics. <laughs> All Atelier games are known for their beautiful art style and happy and colorful environments and their character designs. Perhaps especially strong are the actual character designs. The environments are the simplest in Sophie and they get better further out in the trilogy. The starting city in Sophie feels very empty compared to Lydia Wells' city for example super empty. Ferris's environments are based on much bigger and open world-like areas than the other two, where there is a bigger focus on actual exploration. In Lydia and Suel you have much more detailed environments, and not only do you have the map of nearby areas, you also have the paintings map of even more colorful and exciting areas. All menus are gorgeous, though I'm not very fond of the font that they used in Sofia but it's much better in the two later games. The series overall doesn't have the biggest budget, and they have never had that, so that's why some places will have some shortcomings. 
I find that easy to overlook because of all the general overall charm of all of the games. And somehow I can also just feel that the development teams always try their best with what they had. Graphically, all these games look much better on PC and PlayStation 4, but nothing can really beat the portability that only the Switch can offer, and they all look just fine on the Switch. Looking the very best in docked mode, though. Music. It's for the most part good and always happy, but like I mentioned only the two first games of this trilogy has English voice acting, the last one having Japanese voice acting only, just like Ryza and Ryza 2. It is no secret that I much more prefer English voices in all of my games, but it is not a total game breaker for me when there is only Japanese voice acting. I mean, it's fine. But when it comes to the music, as a matter of fact, on this channel that you are watching on right now, Isha Gaming, I am very often using the Atelier music as a background music for a lot of my videos. And for good reason. This soundtrack fits almost everything. I'm very fond of the music across the Atelier series. Really good. Verdict. These games are the DX versions, which includes a few quality of life features, like being able to speed up barrels to double the speed for even snappier grinding sessions, and a ton of extra content and stuff, and the DX versions are considered to be the definitive editions of these older games. And by older games I mean that Sophie was released originally in Japan in 2015, Furious was released in 2016, and Lydia and Swell was originally released in 2017. And no, you don't have to have played the first game in order to enjoy the second one or the third one. In my opinion, you can jump in anywhere, pick the girl that you like the most, if that is a thing. The only thing that will happen is that you will come across some characters from the earlier game, and they may have progressed, changed, or grown up in some way from when you saw them last. Personally, I have played Lydia and Suelle the most, then Sophie, and then Ferris in the amount of hours that I have played them. I've played Lydia as well the most. Also did a review of that. Also did a review of that. Yeah. So Atelier Sophie gets an 8 out of 10 from me because it's good, but the terrible environments that are just so simple in the city and stuff like that, and you can really feel that this game has a budget of sorts. It scores this high because of the charm and I actually like the story. And, you know, the gameplay is solid across all games. I mean, I just enjoyed it. So for enjoyable reasons, uh, I think I feel like it is an 8 out of 10. As for Ferris, mm, I'm currently at a 7 out of 10. This is one game that I didn't play too much on my PS4. I actually play the other two way more. But it's currently a 7 out of 10 because of the terrible fast traveling system, I feel, so far in the game anyway. But it's growing on me, and it may actually turn out to be an 8 out of 10 in the end. I need more time with it, actually. I don't feel like I'm done, if you know if that makes sense. And Lydia and Swell, I actually feel like that is a 9 out of 10 still. Uh, I did a review uh, in my Buy or Not series on my channel, and I gave it a 9 back then, and I still gave it a 9 because it's so cute and fun. I like it, I really enjoy it. It's so pretty, it's so cute. I mean, the, the gameplay is just super enjoyable. There's always something to do. Overall, though, I'm giving the entire trilogy a solid 8 out of 10, which is a really good score. I'm very fond of this series, and you can tell by looking around on my channel. They are, in fact, very solid JRPG games that will last you for a very long time with a ton of things to do always. There's always some sort of list to complete and enemies and quests and side quests and items and synthesis, I mean, so many things and it's very enjoyable. I highly recommend all of these games actually, all of them. And in the end I really want you to click on the link in the top comment and in the top of the description box which will lead you to Atelier Online, the brand new free mobile game. And I'm gonna play it right now. Atelier Online has daily quests and I log on every day to do them. Don't forget my code with in-game bonuses. Thank you to Boltrend for sponsoring this video. And I hope you want to check out the Mysterious Trilogy and Atelier Online. Now, if you enjoy Atelier, please subscribe to my channel. Hit a like because I love 
when I get a lot of likes on my videos, not gonna lie. It makes me super happy. Also drop a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. The combat is turn-based 